What's up, fellow collectors? Welcome back to the MIB Master Toy Museum. I'll be your curator today. Guys, we've got a good one for you. A good hot topic of discussion today here at the MIB Master Toy Museum. Uh, today, we're talking about the relevancy of the variant action figure variants why do we have them why do we need them uh, all of these are viable uh, viable questions you know we've gotten answers from ranging from um, to satisfy the the consumer to giving uh, a chase figure to collectors um, more money for the to toy companies uh, all all viable all viable you know, answers and responses um, to this topic. Uh, but are variants good for the collecting market? Are variants good for the toy companies? Uh, are they good for the consumers who will have to shell out more money? Because that's at the end of the day, guys. That's that's why the variants exist. Uh, whether we, you know, some of us want to believe that or not, um, the variants exist because toy companies want to continue to grow the brand. They want to. They want to grab other markets. You're talking about different um, age groups that are spending their money on certain action figures. You know what what makes a variant cool? And I have uh, the very definition of what a variant is. And let me read read it to you here uh, the variant from Webster's uh, dictionary reads a form or version of something that dif differs in some respect from other forms of the same thing or from a standard and that's uh, that's Webster's version of what a variant is a form of something of the same same thing basically It's incredible what a new paint job or something as simple as a hat as opposed to no hat. And now all of a sudden you have collectors clamoring at their local toy stores, toy shops, Walmarts, Targets, looking for the exclusives. And you know, and Target was, uh, was big in the early 1990s on... Um, exclusives, limited editions, uh, variants. You know, and we're looking at our our uh, Marvel signature series, my uh, two Spider Mans. I was told by a fellow collector, um, and this is really this is how variants get. You know, this is the word of mouth. How finding out about a variant really gets started. I did a a video here on my what I call my regular Spider-Man. And a fellow collector saw the video and said, uh, hey, you know, you do realize that there is a variant to that Spider-Man. And I said, get out of here. 
Now, as a collector and a owner of a museum, I'm compelled to do my research, my due diligence, my homework, and find the variant. He said, yeah, man, it's a, it's, the variant has a reproduction of, amaz of the amazing uh, fantasy, the first appearance of Spider-Man. And they did it with the comic book and the, the variant Spider-Man. As you can see, this Spider-Man has webbing underneath his arms. Pretty, pretty much like he did in the comic book. The comic book, the webbing, and you can see the web design on his outfit. Different. My regular Spider-Man webbing, head sculpt is about the same. Webbing is tighter, closer, knit together, and the spider's different. Variant. Webbing's further apart. Spider's more retro. He's got the webbing underneath his arms. He's got the different box. And he has the comic book behind him. And voila, you have a variant. But why do we want variants? Why do you guys want variants? That's what we want to know. That's what we want to cover. Uh, we want to know, do you feel our variants needed? Do you add variants to your collections? Do you want variants? I've heard people say, you know what? I know there's a variant out there. I'm happy. I'm happy with my first Duke G.I. Joe action figure. Um, I, I don't feel the need to go racing out to Toys R Us and pick up the variant version of Duke because they gave him a hat and new clothing and slapped a sticker on it and called it a variant. Um, no thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll stay home and I'll be happy just with my initial duke and some some collectors uh some enthusiasts can can say that with conviction and others can't it's very difficult we want to know what side of the fence are you on more variants less variants um, i don't care what box are you checking today leave your comments in a comment section right underneath this video guys this is a it's a great topic of discussion especially being a collector and myself uh, a, a museum curator um, it's my job to go out um, and claiming that I have a museum it's my job to go out and locate these variants and to add these variants uh, for historical purposes so people can see um, that there was a variant. There was a variation of a certain figure from a certain time period. Uh, we're looking at our our figures toy company, uh, two Batman figures. Um, we're looking at our retro Batman figure. And then we're looking at our, our limited edition. Uh, only 500 of these guys were put out. Um, a gold card. Batman and this is more from the, the 1989 he's more of the 1989 uh, movie version of the Dark Knight what's the difference you know well you have um, a di obviously um, he's decked out in an absolutely gorgeous uh, black Batman outfit attire head sculpt 
for the most part, you're talking. Once again, we said this earlier in the video. It's 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 crazy how just a paint job goes a long way with the action figure. Cool. Retro cool. Super cool. You decide. Um, is it enough just to have the standard retro card uh, Batman figure? Get the focus in here. Or knowing that this figure, this uh, Batman 500 Limited Gold Card Series Batman is out there, is it enough to say... No, I don't I don't need this figure. I have this Batman. That's enough for me. No more. I have enough Batmans. I can do without the gold card super limited blacked out Batman variant. You know, all these um, these points of views, topics, I mean, uh, they're all, they're all relevant, um, to every collector. It's really what you want. It's, it's, it's how you feel, but it's important to have, it's an important discussion to have if you're a collector and if you are a, a a collector that simply must know about every action figure that's out there whether you're going to purchase them or not then this video will definitely be fun for you to sit back with your popcorn and relax and just uh, drink your Pepsi and have fun with But when the toy companies found out that, hey, you know what, we can we can make money on this, um, especially when uh, the, the 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 collectors from the 1970s that are all grown up now, you know, you and me goes back. Well, that changes the game. Um, we're looking at our two face of the screaming werewolves figures. Um, one figure, um, the first face of the screaming werewolf figure was met with uh with a lot of fanfare and and some criticism so here's another point of view uh migo who listens really listens to its consumer and fan base uh heard and read a lot of the things that um, were being said positive and negative about this first face of the screaming werewolf figure and wanted to set out in a sense to kind of rectify that then you bring the wave four face of the screaming werewolf variant figure to the forefront once again we're talking about a change of clothes and it's amazing what a paint job will do. Changes the game. Um, I've talked to a few collectors because we do our due diligence. And a few of my uh, collector buddies uh, stated that uh, they would no way, shape, and form uh, be purchasing the variant werewolf screaming face of the screaming werewolf figure uh they simply were satisfied with the first one um why own two why go out and buy pretty much the same figure whether it's a different paint job or not and and you know that's that's their prerogative that's fine and i i totally respect that do you have 
both of the face of the Screaming Werewolf Mego figures, Wave 3 and Wave 4. How do you feel about that? Are you satisfied with the first one? Or as just the collector in you, is it a burning desire, an absolute burning desire to know that there's another variant version of this first Face of the Screaming Werewolf figure out there and not have it a part of your collection? Difficult? Sure. But we want to know. Um, this is a, a good topic right here with the Star Trek, the release of the Star Trek uh, new Mego figures. Um, we, we're looking at our Wave 3 green shirt Kirk, and we're looking at our Wave 4 variant uh, Kirk in his dress attire shirt, ambassador shirt, if you will. Different gun there, phaser, communicator, and different shirt. Same head sculpt for the most part. But what's separating these two figures are, are honestly the shirts, the weaponry, and the communication systems. Communicators, phasers, and shirts. That's the only thing that's separating these two figures. And I've been told that the, the new variant Kirk simply, you know, that you can find what well, better yet. I've been told by collectors that, you know what, not picking him up. Um, no need. Um, I have the, the green shirt Kirk. I'm satisfied with the green shirt Kirk. We all know how difficult that guy was to find. But, you know, you have a lot of collectors passing on the new variant version uh, ambassador shirt wave four captain kirk um and simply because i guess it's variant variation maybe not enough maybe not enough but these are these are the tough topics guys uh that can be tough fun exciting to discuss but you know i can go on to two or three different toy websites that's carrying the Wave 4 Mego figures, and this guy is still available, where a lot of the Wave 4 Mego figures have been sold out and placed back on back order, or you have to pre-order again. You can still get this guy. You can still get this guy. So, numbers don't lie. And with my my two uh, uh, GI Joes here, my two 12-inch GI Joes, I was in Walmart on separate days. Uh, I I purchased this guy first, the tan shirt GI Joe, uh, tactical. He's a ta tactical advisor. comes with the same stuff everything I went to another Walmart maybe a day or so later tactical advisor same guy <laughs> the same guy difference Black shirt, black hat. That's that's your difference. That's the only difference separating these two GI Joe figures. They're both tactical advisors. They both have the same equipment. They both have a poster inside. The difference, black 